hundreds of schools were invited to participate in the 14th Annual National Accounting Olympiad 2010, presented by the South African Institute of Accountants, CYPA. Accounting teachers submitted the best five students from their schools to the regional exams, with the winners from the regions going through to the finals where the national winners were chosen. An award ceremony was held at the Johannesburg Country Club in Woodman, Johannesburg, to celebrate the achievements of our National Accounting Olympiad winners for 2010. The CIPA Chairperson of the Board, Ms. Rina Hutting, fellow CIPA Executive Committee and CIPA Board members, the CIPA Chief Executive, Mr. Shahid Daniels, the Exafa Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Vixen Inube, guests, learners, and parents, teachers, and last but not least, our sponsors. I take it that all protocols have been observed. Sunny Bonani, Molo, Hello, Tobela, Dumela, Lumela, Abusheni, Sunny Bona, Avuwani, Sali Bonani, Assalamu alaikum, Namaste, Hello, and Good Evening. A truly warm, African welcome to the 2010 National Accounting Olympiad Gala Dinner. A night of the stars, and as I would like to say, a night with the stars, our learners. My name is Kanta Naika. I am a professional accountant SA, a CIPA board member, executive committee member, and the chairperson of the marketing committee. I will be your program director for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, Tonight is about celebrating the success of the learners in the CIPA National Accounting Olympiad 2010. To give you a brief introduction to what CIPA is all about, it gives me great pleasure to call upon the Chief Executive, Mr. Shahid Daniels, to address you. Mr. Daniels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kantha. Um, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll try my best not to spend too much time here because there's lots of other activity for the evening. Um, it's heartening for me to see all the winners here, all the sponsors, and uh, as well as the winners as parents and also the, the board members, uh, Madam Chair, and Ms. Rina Hutting, board members and past board members. It is important for me to give you a bit of background who we really are, who is CIPA. It's a myth out there that people don't know who CIPA really is, and um, people make reference to uh, this one particular professional body. The South African Institute of Professional Accountants is uh, 28 years old in this country. We started way back in 1982 as an accounting technician uh, organization. We have grown in stature over the years that we've become a fully-fledged professional accountancy organization to such an extent that in 1995, we become a full member of IFAC as well as EXAFA. IFAC is the International Federation of Accountants based in the New York, in the United States, who is the mother body of the accounting and auditing profession. We're also a member of EXAFA, the Eastern, Central, and Southern African Federation of Accountants, and I'm glad to have the chief executive here, and he can vouch for it. I'm currently busy with some discussions looking at the African continent, and it's come to know that CIPA, as at the young age of 28 years old, is the third biggest accountancy body in, on the African continent, the entire African continent. CIPA in itself has the reciprocal agreements and have international recognition other than being a member of its mother body who subscribe to the code of conduct, ethics of IFAC. Um, IFAC just um, issued a new code of conduct um, in July last year, effective 1st of January in 2011. And obviously, as a member body of IFAC, we will fully adopt the new code of conduct of IFAC. We are also locally, or before I come to the local arena, We've got reciprocal agreements with the National Institute of Accountants in Australia, as well as the 
Sumara Institute of Professional Accountants in Russia. Those of you who just heard that Russia have won the bid for 2018, so you can join us there next in 2018. Um, as a professional organization, we are governed by a board uh, administered by a secretariat, which unfortunately I'm heading the secretariat. And um, our qualification is leveled, and those of you, I think I've got the educators here, I've got Professor Cavender here, is that an NQF level seven equal to all the other major professional bodies in South Africa. We have a f the secretariat have a fully fledged education department, which we call nowadays accreditation, compliance and development department, a fully fledged technical department who look after the technical aspects of the profession, the education, the accreditation, as we call it, the ACD department is looking after the uh, compliance in terms of um, uh, our QAP with facet. I see Lauren is here, Lauren. Professor, thanks, is uh, the skills professional at FACET. Does the CETA responsible for the accountancy profession? As an organization, have relationships with everybody in the accountancy profession here in South Africa. We've got the relationship with government. Our stakeholders is SARS, CIPRO, our sister organization, the Chartered Accountants, SICA, uh, ACCA, uh, CIMA, the two UK branches uh, in, uh, in South Africa, and we continue to grow. We are in a growing organization to such an extent that we evolve. You'll see, some of you have seen the video here. Some of you have heard our ad on the Radio 702, and it's going to be in those who are in Cape Town. will be on Cape Talk um, 567 as well. And we are growing in leaps and bounds and our presence is being felt not only in South Africa, but internationally. We are called upon, I just came back from uh, and lo lots of us that are being here, my chairperson, the uh, program director, and a number of us that are here, here tonight, just came back from the World Congress of Accountants, which is held every four years. It was in um, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. And during my interaction with the rest of the world, Lots of people want to engage with me in terms of to have reciprocal agreements. So what I'm saying to you, it is our, the body is not only recognized here in South Africa as a major player in the accountancy profession, but also in the international arena. Without further ado, I'm not going to bore you with any more stats and data. I would like to encourage you to enjoy the evening. Amongst us, I will be around. Those of you who want to chat to me, or my, uh, like of my entire management team is here. Mr. Um, Lester Goldman is here, and Naveen Lal Saab. Lester Goldman, the Chief Operating Officer. And Naveen Lal Saab is heading the ACD department. I don't see Faith here yet, as, as yet. He's not here yet. Faith in Gwenya is head of the, um, 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 the uh, technical division at the Institute. But enjoy yourself, enjoy the evening, and once again, congratulations to all the winners of the Olympiad. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. What I took away from your uh, brief introduction, a br brief uh, talk about Cyper is that uh, Cyper is becoming a world player, and our winners this year have eight years in which to get to Russia. So no pressure. <laughs> Um, I know your orders have been taken for starters, and starters will be served shortly, and um, please enjoy. There is a long history behind this Olympiad, um, and it's gained momentum in the last few years. Uh, and the reason I think it's gained a lot of momentum is that um, a colleague of mine has taken, taken it by the reins and, and pushed it forward. And in order to understand the purpose of the Olympiad, um, I'd like to call upon a colleague and a friend and a fellow board member and the chairperson of the Olympiad Committee, Mrs. Shirley Olson, to briefly share with you the statistics from this year's Olympiad. Um, Shirley, if you could come up and just let us know why these guys are here and why they're going to win the jackpot. CIPA Chairperson, Rena Hutton, CIPA Board Members, CIPA CE, Mr. Shahid Daniels, 
fellow members of SIPA, Vixen Nubi CEO of Exafa, SIPA staff, sponsors, members of the press, and last but by far the most important, and in fact the reason we hear our Olympiad winners, their guests and their teachers and mentors. Over the last few years, this project has proved to be both exciting as well as a challenge to Cypher as well as myself. Now, I've been given the most boring part of the evening, so I apologize for that, and I'll try and make it a little bit more interesting. Um, I've been asked to give you a little bit about the history, the objectives, where we've come from, and I think mo the most important part of it is where we go into. So I'll leave that for last. I also want to mention that I was only given two to five minutes for the speech. Actually, I think that was five to seven. But I think Janine knows that, you know, if you give an accountant and you tell them they've got 40 minutes, they'll take two hours. So just bear with me. The South African Institute of Professional Accountants, SIPA, has coordinated the annual Accountant Olympiad for the nine years since 2002. So we have come, come a far way. The aim of the Olympiad is to emphasise the actuality of accounting and to present Cyper as a career choice to young upcoming accountants by means of sound competition. Can I repeat that? To present Cyper as a career choice. Those are to the learners. Okay. <laughs> the Olympiad is targeted at all accounting learners in grades 11 and 12 throughout the country. Just a little bit of the history and the statistics which will just show you how far we've actually come. Um, unfortunately, the first year it was run, we don't actually have the figure or, or the amount of entries that were on. But in 2003, we had 153 entries. 2004, we didn't have any data. 2005, that figure jumped to 876. 2006, 1,854, and that was the year that we actually started uh, then changing the way we did things. And in 2007, that jumped to 2,647 entries nationally. In 2008, we were also sitting, in fact, we came down a few. We, we sat at 2017. 2009, we had a whopping 11,000 entries received. Um, of which 650 made it to the second round and approximately 300 schools entered. This year, we actually, um, in 2010, we actually gave a lot of thought to how we run the Cypher project and what we're there about and wh what are we looking at. And we actually realized it's not about the numbers. So it's great to say 14,000 actually entered the Olympiad. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to take a strategic approach and actually approach accounting schools or, or schools that actually um, fifth, more than 50% of grade 12 learners took accounting. By doing this, we actually only sent, we targeted 702 GED schools um, nationally and we had 209 schools who actually entered the competition, of which three dinner lady schools were um, also entered. Let me just tell you a little a, a bit about uh, dinner lady schools because I think it's quite important um, for you to understand the history and particularly when we get to the prize giving, it'll, it'll make a little bit more sense. Can you all hear me? I've been told to move a bit. See, I've got marketing people all over, you know, they tell you to move this way and that way and up and down and eventually you feel like this puppet, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dinner Lady Schools were formed in 2001. It's actually a government initiative to improve participation and performance in maths and science, particularly amongst previously disadvantaged schools um, or disadvantaged learners. Who liked maths and science at school? Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, I like the maths bit, I didn't like the science bit. <laughs> but it's basically a maths and science project that's named um, a certain number of schools as dinner lady schools. These schools are to become the hives for maths and science students, where, where learners would be able to study these subjects well because government would the government actually plough money into these schools. And currently, at the moment, within South Africa nationally, there are three, sorry, there's 500 schools across nine provinces. Um, as I've mentioned, this, this project was launched by government, and all the din 
Dunaledi schools get monitored, um, there's a very high standard and actually um, if they're not performing, if they're underperforming, they're actually removed from the list. So the extra funding that they get is removed. So um, government is very passionate about making sure that the level is very high and they're producing um, high quality education at those schools. However, government cannot overcome all the challenges alone and needs support of stakeholders as well as partners. They want companies to adopt Dunaledi schools to mobilise technical support and expertise for the development of mathematics and science. And accountancy is a maths-based subject, and obviously CIPA is very much in support of this project. According to Dunaledi Pandor, former Minister of Education, who is now Science and Technologically Min Tech Technological Minister, she said, we need to expand maths and science success. We need to increase the number of engineers, doctors, accountants and other professions in order to strengthen our competitiveness and enhance development. All these objectives require high competency in maths. Back to our statistics, Cyprus statistics, Olympiad statistics. In the first round of 2010 competition, CYPA had 1,211 entries. Bearing in mind, we changed our focus, so we didn't have the, the big numbers. Only 75 learners made it through to the second round. That already shows you the standard was quite high. 26 historically disadvantaged dinner lady project schools entered the competition this year, and none made it through to the second round. 33 regional winners were identified in the final results of the competition. Um, what happens with the regional winners is those winners are actually given prizes at, at the different regions. Um, they actually go to the schools and they present those regional winners with prizes. Um, tonight we actually are to, to give the awards to the national winners. Five winners at national level, including our special award for the Dinaledi School category. This year, we had a tie in in second place. Both our second place learners achieved a 100% pass mark in the second round of the competition. I also want to mention there was a company very much involved this year. The company's name is Proverta, and a special thanks to you guys. You actually delivered, they actually delivered all of the um, the information and the, and the study guides that went to the learners nationally across the country. If we can just give them a round of applause. The low percentage of learners who made it to the second round is a concerning factor, and CIPL will certainly address this factor. However, this points directly to the problem that schools are having with learners making subject choices that exclude maths, accounting and science, which are key subjects to premium career choices. Our learners have the wrong perceptions about these subjects and are even afraid to attempt them. This perception needs to be broken and learners need to be encouraged to take these, up, to, to take these subjects up at schools. You know, I think it's become very evident that learners are scared to take maths, are scared to take science, um, so much so that they've now brought in a different maths. And I know we had a lot of jokes with my stepson um, that he actually went down to, what, what is it, maths lit? Um, and, and we had a lot of fun with him. But, you know, I think it really is something that we need to be concerned about. And we need to realize that maths and science are very, very important subjects. Um, there's actually a project that um, uh, FACET runs in, um, in the Western Cape, and it's actually called a Schematis project, and they actually take learners um, and they identify learners that are potential people that just didn't make it for um, university, and they actually take them through a program, and that program is literally bringing their skill up on maths and science. Um, and I had the opportunity to speak to the, the lady who actually runs that project, and she said the biggest problem is the way t uh, learners are actually taught um, the maths and science. So it really is a national problem. It's not just a local, local problem. The future, the most exciting part about um, my speech, hopefully. Um, 
CIPA intends to create a CIPA bursary to pay for the first year fees for a BCom degree student at any university. This student we would want to be the winner of the CIPA National Accounting Olympiad competition. We are looking at expanding the current competition circulation from the 700 schools to all of the South African schools. And can you believe that's approximately 10,000 schools? I thought I'd read wrong. 10,000 schools. With particular focus on the 500 Denalidi project schools. Members can participate by sponsoring events, adopt a student concept. This is my selling bit, you know, for those of you who are interested. And thereby become part of a CSR or corporate social investment project and gain BE points. I was just informed today for um, information that SAPA has just obtained its BE status or BE rating and we are a level one. For those of you who don't know how important that is, um, sponsors can now get 135% spend on any sponsorship to SAPA. So marketing, I've done my bit. Um, <laughs> sorry, I've got more. Uh, we will need half funding for this project um, to, take, to, to come off the road. Um, I think we realize that, and that's why these, these events and tonight is so important. Um, anybody who's interested in getting involved in this fantastic project, um, it's very close to my heart, so you can come and speak to me afterwards. Otherwise, you can contact any of the staff, the marketing staff at SIPA. We believe that through this project, the awareness of accounting will also increase and the lack of qualified accountants will decrease, hopefully over time. CIPA's visibility as a leading accountancy institute in South Africa will inevitably increase and become synonymous with education in accountancy. I wish our winners success in their future studies and I, sincerely and, I, and I sincerely hope and pray that you will consider CIPA to be your professional accounting body of choice as you decide to go into the accounting as your career. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shirley. And on behalf of marketing, thanks for all the marketing talk. Um, as we wait for starters to be served, I thought I'd uh, share a joke with you. Uh, accountants are generally grey people in suits, and I say people because generally it used to be considered grey men in suits, but as you note, our chairperson of the board is female, um, Rina Hutting, the first one in tw our 28 years of existence, and she's doing an absolutely great job, and that's not just because um, I'm female that I say this, but um, woman power. <laughs> okay, let me share something with you. The accountant and the boss. There was once a business owner who was interviewing people for a divisional manager position and had a variety of individuals for the position. He decided to select the individual that could answer the question, how much is two plus two? The first candidate was an engineer. He pulled out a slide rule and showed the answer was four. The second candidate was an attorney, and he stated that in the case of Svensson versus the state, two plus two was proven to be four. The final candidate was an accountant. When asked what two plus two equaled, the accountant did not respond immediately. He looked at the business owner and then got out of his chair and went to see if anyone was listening at the door. Then he returned to the business owner and said, what would you like it to be? <laughs> With that, please enjoy your starters. The next speaker we have for you is our chairperson of the board, Rina Hutting. I um, spoke about her just now. And what's so special about this is that Rina is the first female chair of the board. Um, and I think Cyprus come full circle to actually show that we are transforming from a gender perspective. We are transformed from a secretariat perspective. And we're busy transforming our board to be representative of the land that we live in. Um, without much further ado, please put your hands together to welcome Rina Hatting. Uh, 
Um, good evening, everybody. Um, in Cantha's words, the ladies are taking over. So please note, um, I think we four ladies on the, or not, I don't think I know, we four ladies on the board. So the ladies is becoming more prominent in the uh, accounting world. So please take note, although our winners are all male this time, <laughs> watch out next year, the ladies is coming. I can assure you that. And uh, we, <laughs> yes, give a good, great hand for the ladies. Um, I need to congratulate each and everybody um, who part partook in this uh, National Accounting Olympiad. Not only the winners, yes, you are very special, but everybody who uh, enrolled for this uh, exam or the Olympiad, uh, each of them have a passion for accounting. So I think. Uh, although they're not present, um, there is a word of congratulations to each and every one of them, everyone that was reached by this Olympiad. Um, uh, Kantha just mentioned that um, accountants as, is seen as a gray profession, but surely it isn't. If you look around you, you, you will notice that we are not gray people. And if I can tell these young gentlemen who's winning the prizes tonight, why can't you be the James Bond of the accounting profession? Why not? Um, you are all well-dressed. Um, you've got technology. We've got wonderful technology. I think part of the prizes are technology. And uh, you can become a, a world traveler. As our CE just mentioned, we just returned from um, Kuala Lumpur where the uh, World Congress of Accountants were. And in 2018, is it 20? 2014, it's in uh, Italy, the World Congress of Accountants. So you can become a world traveler. So why can't you be the, the James Bond of the accounting profession? So come on, we are not great people. Just look at us. So you can make it interesting for yourself. Uh, so whatever path that you, you choose is unique for your goal. Um, whether you are uh, tech savvy, you curious, detailed orientated, or entrepreneurial, or you just like your martini shaken and not stirred, no matter what, there is a rewarding path for you as an accountant. Thank you very much. What she didn't add is that um, she's not gray because she actually rides a Harley, or two. <laughs> Or three. I don't know if the other ones arrived. <laughs> so certainly, accounting not, is not a boring, boring profession, and not boring as it as it used to be. Um, as I was talking to one of the learners uh, earlier, um, you know, Friday afternoons at an accounting practice are no longer, you know, till 4:30 or 5. Uh, there's a social event, and there's a drinks afterwards, and there's so pe accountants do let their hair down from time to time. Um, <laughs> but when there's work to be done, if they have any hair, Mr. Sali. Uh, <laughs> um, guys, before we get to the juicy bits of the evening, um, the main meal is going to be served. Please enjoy and uh, feel free to walk around and uh, engage with the people around you. There are lots of people here with wealth of knowledge. Um, I don't want to try and add up all the years of experience we have in the room amongst us. Some older, some younger, and some in between. Please enjoy the main meal. If I could have your attention once more, and I apologize for uh, breaking the good conversation. We'd like to get going again. We've got, uh, got to the most juiciest part of the program. Uh, it's almost like um, Christmas has come early, uh, but Christmas coming early for some very special people in the room who've worked very hard. Um, and this is our chance to, to now acknowledge that. As we start this, um, this session with, with the handout of the prizes, I'd like to call upon um, Rina Hutting to come up to hand over certificates. Um, 
and then the sponsors. And of course, then the winners as well. Okay, the third prize winner in the um, Cyper National Accounting Olympia 2010 is Matthew Rigby. He's from St. Yes, you're allowed to give him a, a round of applause. <laughs> He's from St. David's Maris um, Inanda from, in Johannesburg. And he was unable to make this event, but his parents are present, and I, I, will, I will, come up, will come up to actually collect the prizes on his behalf. So if I could ask his parents to please come up. Okay, Mr. Van Burke, you can't leave us yet. You've still got to collect more. <laughs> um, the prizes, I'm going to read the prizes out and the sponsors that they come from, and I'd like the sponsors to come up as well. And for those sponsors that are not in attendance, if Lester Goldman can come up. Matthew has received an Acer laptop from ServeUnet IT Solutions, and they are not in attendance um, today, and I'd like Lester to come hand over that prize, please. He has also received book vouchers of 1, 000, to the value of 1,500 rand from Juta, and the Juta representative, Pindiwe Sibiko, could you please come up? He also receives a digital camera from CQS Technologies, and they're not in attendance, and Lester, if you could do the needful, I think you're gonna just have to stand on stage. <laughs> and then the icing on the cake, um, and you leave the best for last, I think. Well, they're all good. Uh, he receives a 30,000 Rand bursary from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. And we have Professor Krish Govinder with us. And before he comes up, I just want to tell you that this bursary and, and the awarding bursaries um, to the 2010 winners, Professor Krish Govinder is the Deputy Dean from the Faculty of Management Studies. And this prize that we've got here, this bursary comes from him, from, the, from Professor Trevor Jones, the Chairman of the UKZN Scholarships Awards Committee, and Professor Leslie Steinbank, the Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies. Professor Govinder, if you could please come up and do the meeting. I'd like to invite you all to take a picture together, if the sponsors and representatives could please, together with Rina. Thank you, thank you. If the sponsors could remain. <laughs> so that was the third prize winner. And uh, to Matthew's parents, if you could convey our deepest congratulations. And um, hopefully he's gonna put all this to very good use. Our second prize winner, we, and as we, you know, when Shirley went through the st statistics, she said to you that this year we have two second prize winners. Um, and when we sat to look at this as a committee, we said, how can that be? <laughs> uh, and we obviously used um, criteria to, to, do, to give both of them the prize. Um, the first of the two students is Neil Smith, and you can please give him a round of applause. <laughs> and I must mention that he achieved a 100% pass mark the prizes that he receives are the Acer laptop from Pastel Accounting. So if I could ask for Jeremy Alderson Smith to come up. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. <laughs> Smith. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Rina. It's Smith and Smith. <laughs> um, he receives book vouchers to the value of 2,000 rand from Juta, and Pindiwe, if you could do the needful. If I could ask Mr. Daniels to come up to do the next um, presentation. It's from CQS Technologies, and it's an eight gig iPod Nano. <laughs> In addition to that, the University of KZN has been very, very um, generous yet again. And Neil also receives a 30,000 rand bursary, 
And if I could ask Professor Governor to please do that. In addition to that bursary, he also receives a second bursary to the value of 39,000 rand on the other side of the world <laughs> from the University of the Northwest. We do not have a representative here, but I must mention that this um, bursary is from, from, from Professor Rian de Jong, the director for the Center for, Man for Business, Mathematics, and Informatics, and Mr. Dani Heffer, the director of Financial Support Services. If I could ask Mr. Daniels to please hand that over. The next prize for Neil comes from Nokia, and it's a Nokia cell phone. Is there a representative? No, Mr. Daniels, if you could do the needful again. If I could ask all the sponsors to please stand together for a photo. photo. Okay, our second, uh, the tie for second place, um, the second person, or not the second person, they were both 100%, goes to Isaac van der Westhuizen, and you can give him a hand of a round of applause, please. <laughs> He's from Jim Fouché um, High School in the Free State, and again, his prizes are an Acer laptop, from Pastel Accounting, and is Verno here? Oh no, you, are you coming up as well? Is Verno here? He also receives book vouchers to the value of 2,000 Rand from Juta, and Pindiwe will, will do that for us. If I could ask Lester to hand over the prize from CQS Technologies, which is an eight gig iPod Nano. Again, I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and from the University of KZN, Professor Krish Gavinder will hand over the 30,000 bursary. Nokia, cell phone from Vodacom in four ways, and if I could ask Lester to do the needful there again. And then a further bursary from the University of the Northwest, and we don't have anybody representing them here, and if I could ask Lester to please do the needful for the 39,000 bursary. Mr. Daniels is tired, he doesn't want to walk up and down. Can I ask you all to come together to take a photo? Can you see why it's so good to do well at accounting in school? You get lovely prizes. And the first prize winner for the Saipa National Accounting Olympia 2010 goes to Werner Pansikro. I think I've, I hope I've done that today. And he comes from Hoare School, Menlo Park, which is in the Jacaranda region. The prizes that he receives, sit back, people. <laughs> it is a Dell laptop from VKN Financial Services, and I'd, I'd like to ask Mr. Naidu to come up to do that presentation. Book vouchers to the value of 2,500 rand from Juta, and Pundiwe will do the needful there. I don't know if I should read the next prize, because my son wants one, and it's his birthday tomorrow, so <laughs> maybe you can donate it to me, and I'll declare it. <laughs> he gets a Nintendo Wii games console, and that's from CQS Technologies, and if I could ask Lester to do the needful. And believe me, there are accounting games for we. I know. I've checked it out. <laughs> Once again, the University of KZN, Professor Governor, if you could hand over your bursary for 30,000. A Nokia cell phone to keep in touch with everybody from Vodacom four ways, and if I could ask Lester to do the needful. And 
And if you don't want to go to sun, sea, and surf, and live in Durban with all the heat, go to University of the Northwest, and that bursary of 39,000 Rand, if I could ask Lester to hand that over as well. <laughs> then, when Shirley went through her history of the Olympiad, she spoke about this year being special and about how we had approached, or we had gone and, and hand in hand worked with the Dinaledi Schools Project. And this year, we're very proud to announce that we selected a, a project winner from one of the Dinaledi Schools for a student who received a 94% pass mark at regional level. And that person is none other than Manaf Bray, all the way from Cape Town. Manaf, if you can come up. Munaf attends Rylands High in the Western Cape. And I don't know whether the seating was done this way or not, or, or how, how the seating was done. But almost all the Cape Town people are sitting at the same table, including board members and, <laughs> and the CEO and oh, everybody. OK, except for Rina. Rina, you want to move to Cape Town? <laughs> right. The prizes that Munaf receives it's a laptop from QuickBooks, and if I could ask for Gary Epstein to come up. If he's here, yes he is. <laughs> Munaf also receives book vouchers to the value of 2,000 Rand from Juta, and if I could ask Pandiwe to do that. And, Munaf, if you'd like to go to university in KZN, in Durban, my hometown, a 30,000 rand bursary from the University of KZN from Professor Govinda. <laughs> or if you want to move very far away from your mommy, and you want to move to the University of the Northwest, a 39,000 rand bursary from them, and if I'd ask Lester to please do the needful. And if you decide to live very far away from home and take up the 39,000 bursary, I knock your cell phone from Vodacom, uh -huh. and if Lester could do that as well. <laughs> if I could ask all the sponsors to have, take the photo. Okay, we've got through one part of the prize giving. There are lots more prizes to come. But whilst we wait for our ladies to get sorted out for marketing, let me share another joke with you. The joke is entitled Qualified Accountant. The HR department had carefully interviewed 38 people for the job of assistant to the financial director. The chief executive thought that one candidate, Charles, seemed ideal. Charles had been to a good school. Not only was he a qualified professional accountant, but Charles also had a master's degree in business administration. And he seemed fully aware of the latest creative accountancy techniques. You know, one of those gelled hair types. Charles said, the chief executive, Charles said the chief executive, We've decided to offer you the job. And so you're well qualified, and we've decided to start you off on a slightly higher salary than the one advertised. We'll pay you 360,000 rands a year. Thank you, replied Charles. But exactly how much is that a month? <laughs> He's a qualified accountant. I'm hoping that we're not producing accountants like that in this country. <laughs> Before we go there, I think we need to give our sponsors a well-deserved round of applause. <laughs> For the wonderful prizes you've given our students um, this evening. But there are more prizes, and that leads me on to the next bit. Prizes have also been sourced for schools and teachers. What I would like to happen here is for the sponsor to come up um, I'll, call, I'll call out what the prize is and who it's for and what it stands for, etc. And if I could ask the sponsors to come up um, to collectively as a group. First and foremost, I'd like to call Mr. Vian van Beek. 
He's from Hoa School, Menlo Park. The first lot of prizes that he's going to receive are for the school, and they are the following. It is an accounting software package from QuickBooks. It is accounting training vouchers from CQS Technologies. It is a 1,000 Rand stationery voucher from Nicholson Stationers. If I could ask those three sponsors to please come up. Then, in addition to, um, in addition to prizes for the schools, this year, the marketing team worked very hard, and they decided that in addition to giving a prize to the school, we need to acknowledge the hard work done by the teachers. And so they've organized a special prize for teachers. And so for you, sir, for all your efforts, and I know you said you just drove your student here, but you obviously drove him during the year to get to where he is now. A macro voucher to the value of 2,000 Rand, and a three-night three night stay at Kwa Maritani Bush Lodge, which was sponsored by Legacy Hotels. <laughs> then, on behalf of her school, Falls Christ, we don't have the teacher here, so if I could ask the student to come up, Neil Smith. The school receives accounting software packages from QuickBooks, accounting training vouchers from CQS Technologies, and your teacher, who is not here, receives a macro voucher for 1,000 Rand and a tax calculator from AdvanceNet. Then for Jim for Shea High School, we don't have a, a, a school representative, but if I could ask Issa um, van der Westeisen to come up. The school will receive the accounting software package from QuickBooks, accounting training vouchers from CQS Technologies, and the teacher will receive a macro voucher of 1,000 Rand and a tax calculator from AdvanceNet. I'd now like to invite up the teacher, Mr. Van der Berg, from St. David's Marist in Anda. The school receives the accounting software package from QuickBooks, accounting training voucher from CQS Technologies, and for you, sir, a macro voucher of 1,000 Rand and a tax calculator from AdvanceNet. Then for our special dinner lady school, all the way from Cape Town, I'd like to call upon Mr. Afzar Ali Wahli from Rylands High. The school, Rylands High, receives an accounting software package from QuickBooks, accounting training vouchers from CQS Technologies, a multifunction printer from Canon, a 5,000 rand check from Facet, and a 6,000 rand check from St. Scythian's School. Now, if you thought that was a lot, it hasn't ended. It goes on, and there are further prizes. Our sponsors have been far from generous. Our marketing team has worked really long and hard at this. So I'd like to call upon the representative sponsors as I call them out, as well as the student in each of the categories. The first prize winner, Berna Pansagro from Host School Menlo Park, Jacaranda. Will you please come up? The complimentary prizes that you will be receiving, and I would like to ask Lester to come up to do the needful. IT hampers with laptop bags, flash drives, and mouse, and an external hard drive from Incredible Connection 4Ways. Sets of Skull Candy headphones from Lux Brands. <laughs> Skull Candy cap and scarf from Lux Brands. A tax calculator from Oxford Educational Supplies. Sports bag from Sportsman's Warehouse and an iPod from the University of the Northwest. Our second prize winners, the first of which being Neil Smith from Hoa School Falls Rist in Mpumalanga, receives the following. Sets of Skull Candy headphones from Lux Brands, Skull Candy cap and scarf from Lux Brands, tax calculator from Oxford Educational Supplies, and a sports bag from Sportsman's Warehouse. <laughs> Isaac van der Westerhazen from Jim Fouché in the Free State. The prizes, additional prizes which he receives are sets of Skull Candy headphones from Lux Brands, 
Skull Candy Cap and Scarf from Lux Brands, Tax Calculator from Oxford Educational Supplies, Sports Bag from Sportsman's Warehouse. Our third prize winner, Matthew Rigby from St. David's Marist in Anda, Johannesburg. And I don't know if his parents would like to come up for this one. You have to take some of the accolade. Additional prizes are IT hampers with laptop bags, flash drives, and mouse, external hard drive from Incredible Connection Four Ways, a tax calculator from Oxford Educational Supplies, and a sports bag from Sportsman's Warehouse. If Munaf could come up, please. Munaf Bray from Rylands High in the Western Cape, part of the Dinner Lady School's project, receives the additional prizes of an IT hamper with laptop bags, flash drives, and mouse, and external hard drive from Incredible Connection Four Ways, a tax calculator from Oxford Educational Supplies, a sports bag from Sportsman's Warehouse, an iPod from the University of the Northwest, and a thousand rand cash check from Umbono Group of Companies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a, 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 an event of this nature will not take place with lots of hard work and lots of sponsors. Um, and I'd like to call upon Mr. Daniels to, to move the vote of thanks before we, we serve um, a dessert. Um, but also just from me and to the marketing team, we have been, I think I've, I've chaired marketing for 18 months, and it's been a long and hard struggle, and we sit with the counting Olympiad and we think, do we do this, don't we do this, how will they see it, and we don't know, and should we do 10 schools, or should we do 50 schools, or, and I'm known as the person at the board that always goes cap in hand looking for money. Well, I think marketing, you can give yourself a pat on the back. You've done a really, really good job tonight and the entire year for running the Accounting Olympiad. So from me, a job well done. And if you could please give them a round of applause. Yeah, I think I've got the easiest task now to just to say thank you to everybody. <clears throat> Folks, once again, you've heard, you've seen the, pro, uh, the proceedings of the evening. It is uh, really an honor um, for Saipa to have all the sponsors here. And uh, you see the prices, is more, I think much more than what the, uh, we have bargained for. And I think it is um, the hard work of the marketing team who've made it happen. Without individually mentoring the sponsors, as per the programs on your tables, and as you've seen on the um, screen here early on. We'd like to thank and sincerely thank each and every sponsor for no matter how small and how big, thank you very much for your support and for your contribution towards the Saipa National Accounting Olympiad. I'll ask them to give him a round of applause, please. <laughs> I just had to mention one particular sponsor and to say thank you very much to them. Is the City Lodge in Four Ways who are accommodating one of the uh, Professor Krish uh, Governor. Thank you very much to um, City, City Lodge for Fairways and Proverto. If it wasn't for Proverto, who stood by us and worked with us and who distributed all the marketing material throughout the country, I don't think we would have had a, such a successful um, um, the Olympiad this year. Thank you very much for Proverto for making it happen for us. Thank you to all of you for being present here, the sponsors, the parents, the staff, the board, everybody that's been here. Thank you very much. But the last thanks I would like to give to the marketing team under the leadership of Janine Connor. Janine, do you mind just coming up here with me? It's to me. Janine is heading the marketing department at Saipa, and she's done some sterling work and the marketing team, the likes of um, Barry, Sumaya, uh, Margo, Malaga, and a few others who have worked so hard. Janine was also very much instrumental in when we had another awards evening earlier this year, about a month ago, the tax thesis competition with the NACE rates, where we also received quite a bit of mileage from the Institute. Janine and her team have worked so hard that the Student Village is a magazine, is it a magazine? In, uh, at, the, at the university campuses. Uh, eh? Grade X. Yeah, Grade X. Have received the SPUD Award as the best graduate recruitment newcomer on campus went to Saipa. 
it was a winning formula for attracting students. It was a it was a winning formula for attracting students while working with a limited marketing budget. Remember the word emphasis on a limited marketing budget was the intense commitment of a mix of media channels by all the Saipa marketing staff. Janine and her team, thank you very much for, the, for, for arranging and managing the Olympiad and all the other marketing in, initiatives at Saipa. Thanks very much. <laughs> Folks, I think we'll, dessert will be served now. Don't run away. And after dessert, uh, during dessert, network with one another. And I wish you all a safe journey home, especially those who come from far. Safe journey, and thank you very much. And I must have the last word before we settled for dessert and coffee and tea. Um, the last sort of joke or phrase I'd like to leave you with is a question. What do you call a trial balance that doesn't balance? A very late night. <laughs> and hopefully we will have a late night and we'll have fun and we'll mix and mingle and you will carry the Cypher name and the Cypher brand and our hospitality home with you. And um, we will see you again next year. And for the um, winners, we will see you in a couple of years' time sitting at Cyper's members. And a few years after that, sitting on the board of Cyper and doing the exact same thing that we're doing now. <laughs>